Ladies and gentlemen, it finally happened. I knew this day was coming. I knew that one day, a model would come along that would be able to score 100% on every single task I throw at it. OpenAI announced 4.1 with the Giants Flash, Google used IO 2025 to sing Gemini 2.5 praises, and Anthropic announced Claude 4 through too much fanfare. They all did very well on my tests, but none of them got a perfect 100 on every single one of them. This morning, however, unless you were paying attention, you probably had no idea that a new king has been crowned. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting DeepSeek R10528. This is the same DeepSeek that wiped out hundreds of billions of dollars in NVIDIA market cap, the same DeepSeek that was trained on a shoestring budget, the same DeepSeek that pushed the frontier of open source AI forward, and now is back and better than ever before. And mind you, these aren't silly tests that many people do, like the number of R's in Strawberry or write a snake game. These are tasks that we actively use in real business applications, and from those, we chose the edge cases on the more complex side of things. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but I feel like I'm Anton from Ratatouille. I'm deeply impressed, pun intended, but also a little bit numb, and having a hard time coming up with the right words. Usually, in my videos, I explain the test, then I talk about the mistakes the models are making, but today, since there are no mistakes, I'm going to do something different. For each test, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of the model's responses and, s and show you how hard some of these questions are. And I hope that gives you a deep sense of appreciation of what a powerful model this is. Before we continue, I would like to ask you for a favor. As you can see, we are a very new channel with a small number of subscribers. So if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing. It costs you nothing and it helps us grow. Also, check out our website, promptchitty.com. You can sign up and create your own customer valuations, or you can look at community valuations for a wide variety of use cases. We have published hundreds of evaluations and are releasing more every week. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, please let it be that you should be testing your own trumps with your own data to see what works best for your use case. Trump Judy helps you do just that. Now, back to the video. So the next test is the named entity recognition test. This is a structured JSON extraction test and the instructions are as follows. You are a specialized named entity recognition system. Your task is to process input text and extract specific entities with the following rules. We tell the model to extract people, keep the names in the original language, locations translate to English, organizations translate to English. We do this because the location and organization is used to populate an SQL query and the data is stored in English. We tell the model to follow the specific requirements for people, extract and separate first and last names, ignore middle names for locations, break it down into city, state and country. We want the country code into, to be in ISO format for state code, we only want US and Canada. For all others, we want international. For organizations, we want to remove legal entity terms. We want to handle multiple entities. We want to correct any misspellings. We want to preserve the original language for person names. The evaluator here is a JSON evaluator. So it compares the model's output to the expected output recursively for each attribute in the JSON. Even if a single attribute is wrong, the score is zero. So this is a very strict test. A couple of years ago, even the best models scored below 50% on this test. But today, as you can see, multiple models score above 90% on this test. So now this is a test where DeepSeek has truly impressed me. As you know, this is the only model that has scored a perfect 100% on this test. And let me show you why even the likes of Sonnet, Opus, and 4.1, Gemini Flash, Gemini Pro, don't score 100% on this test because there are so many opportunities to make a small mistake. Consider this question as an example. It has to detect that these two are names. It has to put Alina and Popov here. It has to detect no another name. It has to put, their, put them in the right order. Um, make sure that the names are appearing in the JSON in the order that they appear in the name in, in the question. 
It's、uh, required to look at the state, know the state code. It has to know the ISO country code. It has to know、um, the city. It has to look at the order of appearance of the company names. We've asked it to remove the things like LLC. It has to know to do that. There are so many things it has to do with the sentence. The Uh, even the larger models in some of these cases make a mistake. So you can see how complex this task is, and how strict the evaluation criteria is. We don't get partial credit. One mistake in this thing, and you get a zero score. The fact that it has scored a hundred percent on this. Let me show you some more, some more complex examples.、Uh, look at this one. Every single model that I've tested in in the in the in the, in the recent history has gotten this one wrong. Because、uh, and by the way, we don't send this English text to the model. We send this foreign language text to the model, and it has to. And from what I know, these two are both person names as well as company names. The fact that it has gotten this correct is phenomenal. Not not a single other model has gotten this question correct, and as you can see, it has. As instructed in the instructions, it has translated this, which was given like this in the in the foreign language. It has in it, it has、uh, confirmed to the rules that we said state province should be international. It knows the country code. It has kept the original language for the name as instructed. This is this is amazing. Let me show you a couple more that are hard. Like、uh, this one. This is、um, this is Dutch.、Um, many many other models, especially Quen, messes up on this.、Um, there is others also in foreign languages. Let me show you.、Uh, this is、um, sorry. This is spelling mistakes that it has corrected.、Um, let me show you some more.、Uh, again, this is Italian. It has extracted everything correctly.、Um, this is brilliant. And then Arabic, as you can see.、Um, Extracted, translated correctly,、um, and then there is a couple more that I felt were exceptionally difficult. Let me let me look for them. Yeah, so there's there's this Finnish one, which is also、um, difficult in terms of translations and identification of the of the right attributes.、Uh, the city names is a, a, a bit problematic. And、um, also, the translation is 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 difficult. Many other models make a mistake here. And then let me show you. I think it's the last one that was a bit more、uh, involved. Yeah. So this is French, and this one is yeah. So here, this is Swedish, and、uh, we send it this, and many many models miss this, and the、uh, org name should be translated as per the instructions to Swedish. Tax agency, and many models miss this. So the fact that DeepSeek did this, all of this, without making a single mistake, I hope that gives you an appreciation of how how amazing this model is. So now this is the SQL code generation test. The prompt is as follows: You are a specialized SQL query generator system for SQLite database. Your task is to process input text and generate a valid SQL query based on the provided schema. Then we give it the following rules: Generate select statements only. No insert, updates, or deletes. Return not allowed for DML. Return not possible if the question can't be answered. Only reference the table letting system. The schema respond only with the SQL query. Respond with appropriate joins. All data is stored in English. We give it the following schema, and then we give it the question, and we give it some examples. The evaluator here is a code evaluator, so it actually runs the generated SQL statement and compares it to the output. To the expected output, so this val validates that the SQL is not only syntactically correct, but also produces the desired results. And again, a lot of models score a perfect hundred percent on this test. Claude Anthropic has always been strong on this test,、uh, but but now with 4.1 and the reasoning series from OpenAI, they're also catching up. And then there are open models like DeepSeek and Quinn that also do very well on this test. So this is another one of those tests where 
We have certain very tricky questions that many models mess up on. Like for example, this one. The number of customers whose birth date is this month. Many models confuse the schema and see the birth date in the employee column table and try to make SQL based on that. But in reality, we do not store the customer's birth date in the schema. So the right answer is not possible. And deep seeks and uh, deep seek gets this. There's another one that many, many models mess up on and where we ask, uh, which is the most profitable day uh, of the week and for the models that do get this right, they give you the date index. They give you the number three. DeepSeek gives you the word Wednesday, right? And very few other models get this right. And again, you know, we have other models that have scored 100% on this. What makes DeepSeek unique is not only has this scored 100% on this, it has also scored 100% on every single other test, which is what makes DeepSeek so special, in my opinion. And I also wanted to show you some of these other questions. What percentage of our total revenue comes from our top five best selling artists? Look at the SQL statement for this. Like if I gave an expert SQL developer this question, it would take them a good five, 10 minutes to come up with a SQL like this, right? If you look at some of these other questions, we have it, you know, have it, have questions in various different languages. Um, you know, we have group buys, we have distincts, we have, uh, our, our RCEs or CTEs or whatever they're called. Um, and then, you know, we have complex questions like, look at this one, which employees have sold music to customers in more than 10 different countries? And what is the total revenue that they have generated sort by revenue in descending order, right? So these are complex questions. These are not like, you know, give me the first name of employee ID one. These aren't the type of questions we're asking in these tests. These are complex questions with complex SQL. And the fact that uh, an open source MIT licensed model is able to score a perfect score on this is just, it's brilliant. And then the final test is the retrieval augmented generation test. Let's look at the prompt. You are a specialized AI assistant tasked with answering questions based strictly on the provided context. Follow the following rules. Use only the data within the given context to answer the question. No outside knowledge, assumptions, or information not explicitly stated in the context. Respond in the original language. Include citations, the format of the citations. If the question is completely unrelated, say, I cannot answer this. If the question is somewhat related, provide the relevant information from the context, respond in markdown. And then we give it the format, then we give it an example, and then we ask the question. One of the biggest things that we're trying to look for in this test is how the model handles trick questions, questions that are about things that are not in the context or questions that are tangentially related to the context, but do not have an authoritative answer. We want the model to follow instructions and say it can't answer the question rather than providing a wrong answer or an answer that is an opinion, not a fact based in the context. I have found that some of the reasoning models struggle a little bit here. Uh, but again, there are a number of traditional non reasoning models that do quite well on this test, both open source and commercial. So on the RAND test, DeepSeek did actually lose 1% or half a percent. So it's actually 99.5. So not a full 100% on this test. And let me show you what it lost points on. Um, this is basically, we are asking the LM to make a judgment call. And we've instructed in the context for the, the model to never make any statements that are not factually supported by the context. So we're expecting the model to say something like, I cannot answer this question, which is what DeepSeek has done here. The only thing it lost points for is it referenced this llama paper and it's not actually referencing it in the actual response. So again, this is because this test has LLM as a judge, as a model evaluator. And I think I use O4 or something as the model evaluator and O4 is very, very picky. So I feel, you know, if I had chosen like a different model as the, as that, as the judge, 
it would have gotten a perfect score of this. So I'm considering this even a 99.5% as a full 100% score. But the point I'm trying to make is look at the type of questions we're asking. We're asking trick questions. We're in like, for example, we instructed the model to say to never make any inferences or, or, um, and output anything that's not factually supported by the context. And then we give it a trick question that will almost require it to do that. And the model has correctly followed our instructions. Again, like all the other tests, there are questions in multiple languages. We also have some trick questions like, you know, we've asked it to respond in the original language. Many other models get this wrong because when they respond to this, they'll respond in English, but that would be a violation of our rule that we've said, you have to respond in the language of the question. Many other models get this wrong. Um, DeepSeek get this, gets this right. This is another trick question. What is the performance of O1 on the MedQA US Himaly 4 options data set with zero shot prompting? Now, this is a trick question because we have the uh, the scores on this test, the med QA USMLE four options data set for a variety of other models, but we don't have it for O1, right? And many models, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll confuse it with a different model. Sometimes what they'll say is, oh, I have a score of GPT-40, uh, and the user probably just means GPT-40, and they'll just respond as if they're responding for the score of GPT-40 with O1. But DeepSeek hasn't made this mistake. So the point I'm trying to make is there are so many questions in here. This is another example. Why is Owen the best model? This is one of those questions that will trick LLMs that tend to want to agree with you a bit more, uh, even when you're wrong, right? So in this case, we're saying, we're making a statement that's not supported by any fact. We want the model to come back and tell us, hey, what you're asking me isn't valid. And many other models fail to do this. DeepSeek has correctly said, based on the, you know, there is, there is no, there is no, does, the context does not explicitly state that O1 is the best overall model. And then it goes on to say, however, it shows up from other models, a specific benchmark and so on and so forth, where it's clearly stating things that it finds relevant from the context, at the same time, correcting you where you've asked it to say something that is not uh, in line with the context. So this is another one of those examples where so, so the, the, the finesse of the model sort of shines. Um, so, so there you have it, folks. I hope I was able to uh, convey to you uh, what an amazing piece of technology we have here. Uh, I'm, I hope you're as excited about this as I am. I cannot wait to hear what you do with this. Please feel free to mention in the comments and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next video.